right now. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. All right, welcome. Free the weed. Free the weed. Okay, yeah. I'd like to take this time to find out if any of you are, oh, normal. Welcome to the Phoenix Normal. In case you don't know, in case you're new here, it's your first time. Um, the Normal is the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. And we're going to update you on some of the progress that we've been doing. We're going to get some feedback from you, introduce you to some new people, um, introduce you to the people that are kind of running things around here. But before I do that, I just want to find out if there are any first-time guests here today. Anyone first-timers? Yay! Everybody give a hand for coming! Thank you so much for showing up. We appreciate you. What may I ask? Uh, may I ask what brought you here today, or how'd you find out about normal? Uh, my friend Rhea told me about it. Hey Rhea, I know Rhea. <laughs> Rhea G, what up, girl? Yeah. All right, she's bringing members in. May I ask how you found out in the back, sir, about being normal? Yes. We can't believe it either. So, um, thank you for coming from California with the more lenient laws and such, and hopefully you can be a positive influence on what we're trying to do and give us some feedback. We're willing and open to learn as well. So, thank you so much, and everyone else that came, welcome. I want to introduce myself. My name is Kim Drawn. We are, uh, the board of directors are here to, this is kind of how we run things around here, and then you guys are all welcome. You don't necessarily have to have a card to be here, but you're more than welcome to join, and hopefully you will maybe get a card or, or meet someone, meet a friend. Okay, so I'm Kim. Um, this is Erin. Hi, Hi, I'm Erin, and I'm in charge of the membership, so if anybody is interested in a membership, please go over to that table. Uh, the gentleman with the yellow hat, his name is Carl, and he'll uh, go over all the uh, membership details with you. Thank you. I mean, I'm sorry, Erin also will be taking donations in addition to just if you want to just help out with the cause that helps us move forward with uh, Decrim, which we're working on, as well as legalization. So, and then right here to my left is Eric Johnson. Hello, guys. Thank you, thank you. A um, little bit. Uh, thank you for coming to the meeting. Uh, we finally are having beautiful weather. Yeah. You always yeah. notice when we have that first month, we have that big jump in people. So, I want to say thank you, everybody, for coming out. Um, we also have um, Ms. Rain Baker and the audience. She's feeling a little not so well today, so she's sitting back taking a breather. And we have Lori Justice. Wherever she is, I believe she's supposed to have been sitting up here. Interesting. Lori Justice, um, she's our patient advocate. And we have Al over there on the right side. He's going to be talking a little bit later on today how to prepare concentrates, the safetiness, and give you the lowdown on everything with that. Alright, cool. Uh, that's everybody. And so at any time, of course, after the meeting, oh, we hope to you guys meet with us and shake hands and introduce yourselves. And we'd like to be let you know that we're available for questions or anything that we can do to help to make you more comfortable here. I um, also want to take some time to introduce my DJ back here, DJ One Period. Woo! Also available for bar mitzvahs. <laughs> 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 Alright, I'm going to give you a brief agenda so you know what's going to happen today, what you should expect to happen at the meeting today. Um, um, I want, we're going to have, uh, we're going to give you a little update about the signatures that we're trying to gather in, con in a connection with uh, Safer Arizona. Um, Al has a presentation today about concentrate, so that should take about 10 minutes as well. So one of our very fortunate board members just got back from Amsterdam. <laughs> He's going to give us a little update about how amazing that probably was, as well as uh, talk a little bit about decrim and other plans that he has put together for that and the research that he's done on the decrim bill. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the conference call that went on that we talked about uh, signature gathers, as well as uh, a couple of the signature um, events that we did, which were at the Reggae Fest, which was awesome last week, as well as Dave Chappelle and a few other things that we did. And then we're going to kind of open it up for everyone um, to maybe add to that. Um, also, I want to make a couple more introductions um, in the house's 
Kathy is supposed to be here. She'll be out of her way soon. Um, Kathy, right Kathy is here? Yes. They always love to sneak in, don't they? <laughs> Never know that they're here. And we also have um, Kathy and Min uh, to give a little update about her normal in Arizona, the state chapter. All right, so um, moving right along, we're going to go ahead and start with, we're going to go ahead and start with Al's presentation. Are you ready, Al? You got everything all set up? You got a microphone over there, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, Al. Hi, I'm Al. I'm definitely a patient. Great to see you guys. Um, so uh, let's go through the list. Uh, you know of all the different forms from finger hash to Sandra Bandit oil to Rick Simpson oil. Uh, I even make a form I call uh, Peter O'Toole oil since he uses isopropyl alcohol. Um, so, uh, yeah, the first, uh, the easiest and safest would be finger hash. Wear gloves when you're manicuring your stuff and you'll get a little residue on your gloves. It's fantastic. And get it in a little ball. There's your first concentrate. Uh, Sander Bando, I would say, would be the next, well, actually, the next safest way to make it is bubble hash. It's a real hassle. It involves all these bags, a lot of ice. I don't like the ice. I always feel, you know, the chloride and the fluoride in the ice is going to be no good. So I'm really not going to cover it because I've never used the bubble hash method. Yeah, it's a big waste. Uh, to me, some out there do swear by, by it. Uh, but Sandra Bandra, if you've heard of her, she uses a heat extraction where what you do, you put it in, put it in the bowl. You, lock, you, you plug it in, but you don't toke. You, you you clip this off. You just let it expire inside. I say put a piece of ice on it so it helps the condensation after several bowls. And I say put a bigger bowl too, because I found uh, with my own vape bag that's set for a couple months with the air in it, it was still potent. So every time you pull that thing off, the gas is at release. But that's a method that's saved people's lives. Center better one. Ah. Uh, Here's, here's a really dangerous one. <laughs> this is the butane extraction. Has anybody uh, played with this thing yet? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Right? Right? Uh, you, you're not supposed to really pack this thing, but get your flour, your product in here, and uh, you take a, a bottle of butane and right into a nice dish. Now, that's what this little booger comes into play with. Uh, you want to... The butane's not pure. You're going to have crap in it. And even though you can... Warm it up, warm it up, work it out. You want to put it in a vacuum chamber and really suck out all the impurities. Even though, and there's another thing, you've got to get good butane. You've got to get at least five times refined. That's why we go to Rick's. It's really the way to go with naphtha. Naphtha is a problem. You can't go to Home Depot and get the VMP naphtha. Uh, naphtha is not referring to an actual chemical itself, it's referring to a boiling agent. There's a high temperature and a low temperature naphtha. Uh, Home Depot sells the high temperature stuff, which also has an uh, anti-rust agent in it. Um, it's slipping at me at the time, but it's poison. You wind up making some poison. Uh, there's a very chemical friendly store at 2604 North 26th Street. Uh, Kim Lab Supplies, Arizona Kim Lab. And you get the pure stuff. This stuff is uh, isoprophic alcohol. This is the easier way to do it to make sure uh, that you're not messing with poison. And it's 99.5% it's pure, and he sells it at 99% prices, which is kind of a big deal. 80 bucks. Or you can get the hexane. Hexane's organic, and it's the naphtha that Rick Simpson's actually talking about. And what you do with that, you get yourself a bucket. Buckets are going to be your friend. <laughs> get yourself plenty of buckets. And uh, you're going to just crush it. I left my own. I have a curling bar that I use to just pound the stems and seeds in the bucket, and then you mix in the agent, and then filter, filter, filter. This is where these bags come in handy. I filter them twice with a, a 25 micron and then a, a 5 micron, and then this baby. Filter, filter, filter. Two coffee filters with a pipe clamp, hang it from my stairs into another 5 gallon bucket, and let it drip through the night. Filter, filter, filter. Get the pure stuff. And Al, is there a type of butane if somebody would have to use butane? If you have to use butane, uh, what would be the it, best type, the most um, refined? There's there's a ten by refined. There's actually some ten by, but that's real hard. Uh, at, on average, you're going to find about a five. I recommend at least a seven, but a five. Vector Vector makes a, a seven by. You can get on Amazon to get that. To. Or, or my, my okay. boy here, he actually has the pure stuff if you wanted to. There's another crazy contraption that recaptures the tsunami. But that's a $1,000 rig you'd have to go look up on your own. Arr. 
money, money, money. Everything's always money. This this little puppy alone, it, it's great. The vacuum thing I really suggest because when you're cooking this off, after the filter, 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 you put it in a rice cooker. The reason you want a rice cooker is to keep the temperature down. A rice cooker won't go over 180 degrees. So you can boil off this low temperature naphtha at less than 180. And the reason I come up with my madness of the vacuum is I can lower the temperature of the boil as right. well as I can control the venting of the gas outside the window. I've got sweat across the yeah. street. I don't really feel comfortable <laughs> making it outside on my back patio. Um, <laughs> Reason. <laughs> <laughs> mix, 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 filter, filter, filter. Yep. It seems like such a simple process. I should have. Well, we could have made a batch. In fact, I'm going to make some. I'm looking for volunteers. If you want more questions, uh, meet with me after the group and uh, I'll make some tomorrow. We can actually come out and do it firsthand. That's the best way to do it. To do it once, then you know. And make sure you do it outside and not inside. Oh, Lord, is this important to vent the gas. I thought I was a genius, right? I did it cooking inside the first time, didn't have it well ventilated, and I'm high. I'm high off the fumes. I'm so high off the fumes that I'm getting impatient, and I go to make some VHO in the meantime, because I'm just, <laughs> this stuff isn't boiling off. I got the wrong stuff. It's high temperatures. Well, my dumb ass is so high from the fumes to speediate the, because the butane's there and it boils off. Boils at, I think it's boiled temperatures like 32 degrees. It's very low. That's why it's cold. It boils instantly. But I take a, a butane torch lighter to speediate. What was I thinking? I wasn't. I was high on the fumes. That's the, I forgot to mention a safety factor. When it comes to safety, that's the most dangerous thing. Uh, with solvents is is that the it's a solvent you're you're working with fumes gasoline basically ninety I'm talking about ninety nine point five percent pure alcohol <clears throat> that stuff will get to you <laughs> no pressure <laughs> so basically what we do is we recommend if somebody is trying to f make this is to find a professional that's done this many of times we do not recommend one person. If they've never tried Absolutely. it or don't know Absolutely. what to do, Absolutely. to YouTube, do it by themselves. YouTube does not replace the experience of actually doing it. For Warren, yourself. you have a question? <clears throat> yeah, I'd just like to uh, point out that one hell of a lot of people have blown themselves up. Absolutely. Other people yes. have burned the fuck out yep. of things and, and destroyed shit the using solvents. <laughs> and, and, and this is a big problem, especially out in California. And in my opinion, nobody should be messing with this stuff, especially in large quantities, yep. if they really have, have a brain. unless they know exactly what they're doing. So unless you've got training in chemistry and hazardous materials and stuff, <laughs> don't do it. Stick it with, was a beautiful stick light with water show. ash, stick with dry sniff, stick with something that isn't going to blow oh, yeah. the kingdom from. And it was so up hot, your it house. didn't bother me. I just slowly put the fire out and giggled. Yeah, yeah, it's not safe stuff. No, I didn't, I didn't mean to recommend that, but uh, there is a, a giddiness you get to know you're making the cure in your kitchen. You, you really can't stop that feeling. How, how long did it take you to perfect it? Um, I don't know. I guess a, a couple batches. Not long. Not long. I mean, uh, boy, I'm, I'm to the extreme with everything. My butter took 12 days to make, but I made 12 pounds of it. And, and speaking of that, I have some brownies here tonight for the raffle. Nice. Oh, they're so right. delicious. Oh, I had to fight not to eat those. Oh. Uh, any questions? Any uh, volunteers you, you to want to help? Dry the dry, you know, you're right. Uh, dry ice is a very safe technique. You just, you take your material in the bucket with your micron screen, shake the heck out of it, and you get Keith. You get Keith scattered all over. Your table, your concentrate, wherever you want to put it. It's uh, and you don't get all of it, but you, you freeze the crystals, the THC crystals. That's how the water method works: is that you're freezing the crystals off and getting them to break off the plant. Whereas the solvents, you're ripping through the entire material. Where if you're going to use water or ice, reuse the rest of the material. That material is still good. You didn't pull all of it out. You can make it into. Uh, I even made it into a water, into a beer water where I. Moonshined it up, but you could have made it beer. 
it's it's good to the end when you're just using water. Yeah, saw ones aren't good. It's a great point, but when you want to make RSO, that's that's how you do it. Extreme safety, people. Extreme safety. Look for professional. Yeah. Um, everybody, I want you to know that uh, the raffle tickets are uh, two dollars a piece, or you can get two for five dollars. So we're raffling off the uh, ten brownies. That, two for uh, five ain't no deal. But, but you do have to have your uh, your card, so we need, we need to make sure that's up to date. So, but uh, we will be uh, selling the raffle tickets, and I'll be going around and, and collecting money for that. She meant three for five. All right, next we're going to get an update on uh, what happened in Amsterdam. <laughs> okay, guys, um, came back refreshed. Um, had great times in Amsterdam. Had um, good stories. Had some not-so-happy stories. But the good stories, I um, went to the Cannabis College. And out of all the cannabis I've seen, out of all the education places, this was the place. I stood there for like four hours just reading. It was amazing. I got posters that we're going to be putting in the raffle straight from Amsterdam. And we've got the Hemp Museum, the Hash Marijuana and Hemp Museum. Got about five of these. Try to get as much of stuff I can get from there. And we've got some nice little um, cannabis knowledge from Amsterdam. So, um, the, let's go with um, the bad things first, okay? Um, I'm, my whole worry was, is the states, is Arizona, is California, is Colorado, do we have better medication? Do we have lower medication compared to Amsterdam's medication? Well, Amsterdam is actually, um, by their laws, they don't have legal marijuana. It's the lowest priority to the point where they just don't look. Um, you can go to a coffee shop, and it only says coffee shop. There's, um, if you see cafes, they're places to get coffee. Coffee shops is where you can get your hash and your marijuana. Only issue is it's, um, I, you can only purchase five grams. You can't go more. So the menus is like in grams and an eighth. It doesn't go higher than that on any of the menus in Amsterdam. They don't allow um, drinking and in a coffee shop, there's no alcohol allowed. Uh, let's see, that was interesting. Um, the nightlife. The nightlife was pretty fun. It was a little on the dirty side, if you ask me. Um, but I won't, I'll keep it, I'll keep it, Pete. Look, I'll keep it. NC-17. Yeah, what's the interesting part? Come on. Okay. Well, interesting. They only had one medical grow in the entire country. One medical grow in the entire country. They didn't know anything about testing. They didn't test any of the meds. Um, oils, what I was just talking about. They have no idea about that. That's not even... You, you can't find that. It's nowhere to be found. Um, drugs, on the other hand, if it's not in a, like a tobacco outlet shop, it, it, it's a person walking down the street every five minutes. I mean, you name it, I could have got it if I wanted to. I, I was hearing things I've never even heard of before. And I'm like, no, no, I'll stay with the marijuana. Um, the marijuana, though, it's more of a tourist town, and this is where the bad news is. Their medication is not as good as America's weed. What? It is not, I hate to say. What? So give it up for America, guys. Yeah. hate to bring that news. Um, the one reason um, the guy, I forgot his name, but at the Canvas, Canvas College told me was, it's a tourist destination. And when you've got people coming in for two or three days getting weed and leaving, they really don't care about their final product, which sucks. But if you go to the cannabis college, they will direct you to the right places. So I took my little rented bicycle, and I drove to one of these, rode to one of these places. And I thought driving, like the bikes out in Amsterdam, there's really no cars. I would guess... 
for every ten bikes, one car. It was nuts. And these people on the bikes go crazy. They're crazy. They're going 30, 40 miles per hour. There's stop signs. I almost got hit about three times by them. I almost ran into two people riding my own bike. They didn't get out of my way. But the bike bicycles are supposed to get out of the way, not the pedestrians. I didn't know that until after. Um, seeds. Um, you can get seeds out there. You can get a lot of seeds. Personal experience, hint, hint. Don't bring them back to your suitcase. Don't bring them back to your suitcase. We'll just leave it at that. I did not miss my next flight. I just made it. But it was close. It was close. Um, but yeah, back to the um, ride to the dispensary. So We can't leave it at that. <laughs> Let's just say if I fly out of the country again, they're going to automatically search me. So they, they flagged me. I got flagged. But I was having a good time. I wasn't thinking about anything out here. I was just enjoying the environment of being free out there. And that's another thing. Like, I was telling last meeting about when I went back to Chicago and it was decriminalized. Like, you could go outside and just smoke a joint. And I'll be smoking, I'll be coughing up lung. So many pacifiers, not one person says a thing. It's normal society there. Marijuana is not looked at as a bad thing out there. It's just, uh, you do it, you don't. You know? You drink, you don't. It's, it's a beautiful thing how they have. And I believe Amsterdam actually, I read a couple months ago, actually had to close down, I think, three or four prisons due to lack of convicts. Yeah. Due to lack of criminals. I'm not saying because they basically have legalized weed and everybody's pretty much medicated and they're okay and they don't cause crime. But yeah, so, um, does anybody have any questions about Amsterdam? I know I'm missing a couple things. It was just a fun blur. I, oh, the red light district. Okay, do we have... Okay, this is where it's getting in an NC-17. They actually had two red light districts. I'm thinking I went to the one, I'm like, what is that? I'm, like, I'm trying to find a Doris Coffee Shop, which the Morrison Hayes was not that greatest either. I was hoping Morrison Hayes was awesome. Not that great, but the Doris Cafe was awesome, but it was right next to one of the red light districts. And yes, there's lots of... Um, red light. Red light. <laughs> Elegant females. I think that's what you really say. Um, but when, where the cannabis college is, it's directly in the heart dab of the red light district. So you had, let's see, uh, you had cannabis college, you had, pardon my French guys, whores in the, in the windows, and then you had live sex shows. And they actually had live sex shows. I didn't go to one, I was like, nah, don't really need to see that, but... There's about four or five places that actually you pay to go see people get laid. I did not, sir. I did not. thought about it. So, any other questions about Amsterdam? We got a question back there. Did you see any window? Not at all. That broke down, I think, two or three months ago. It was just stupidity. Uh, coffee shops, and he, nobody would have abided by it. Okay. Because it's really uh, it's illegal to have marijuana in Amsterdam. Right. Yeah. Right. And that was there four years ago. They were just talking about it. And I knew it went into effect or something. Like yeah, I guess it went into effect, but it, it, I didn't get denied at any one of them. Good. And I, try, I think I hit up about 20 to 25. And I got a gram at each one, and the only issue, I think, honestly, out of the 25 I hit up, four, four strains I had that I was really happy with. My favorite one out there was Dr. Grinspoon. 10 bucks a gram or 10 euros? 
Um, it was about 11, it was, it was like average, like 10, 11, 12 euros. But if we know about the conversion rate, our American money kind of sucks out there. So it comes out to being about the same price. A little, a little bit cheaper, but the quality, again, guys, the quality was not the greatest. I mean, you had some, and I knew, I knew I was smoking something with pesticides. I gave away probably, I think, a quarter worth of weed when I was out there. I was out there five days. I gave a quarter of it away. Um, one fast thing. Um, people don't do joints out there. Well, they do joints, but they're called splits. Um, tobacco and marijuana. Yeah, I can't do that. Warren, fast question? Yeah, they got good import hash in Amsterdam. How was the hash? Rock and that kind of stuff. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I like the hash. Um, I would say equal. I wouldn't go too high. I wouldn't say it was the best hash I've had. But I'd say it's average. It's not. It was. It wasn't shitty. It wasn't shitty. Edibles. Oh yeah, those space cakes. The only thing is edible out there is space cakes. They don't know what edibles mean. They don't know. You, we've seen. We we've, we've come yeah, across them like brownies. They don't have brownies there. They have space cakes. Shrooms. Um, no shroom shakes. But I haven't seen. I didn't see any of them. Did not see any of them. But they did sell a lot of those. No comments. Uh, windmills were on the countryside. I was too busy hitting up every club I possibly could get into. Um, but yeah, when you're smoking a joint, they look up to us and they're like, oh my god, these Americans, they smoke these pure joints. And that's what it's called out there, is what we would just like roll up a joint. It's called a pure joint. Did they smoke blunts? They, there is no such thing as blunts out there. I did get some blunt papers, but either it was just um, splits every which way. Every single... Every single joint, spliff, um, pre-roll, whatnot, all had filters on them. Just the regular filters we could make, but every one of them had them on. I didn't see any person like actually doing what I'm doing. Cause I'm too lazy with the filter sometimes, you know. Just, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. So, <laughs> any other questions about Amsterdam? And I've got some fun stuff. I'm going to be passing this out a little bit later. We're going to do the raffle. Um, Winners will get one of these books, shows you the history. Um, the one thing I thought was amazing about this museum, so much, so much amazing stuff, but Ed Rosenthal was a partner in opening this up back in, I think, I want to say the 80s or the 70s. But if you want to find out the actual information, it's all in this book for $2 a raffle ticket. Oh, yes. Um, Phoenix Normal is now a part of the Cannabis College. Nice. They have my um, Phoenix Normal ID, I think from 2007 or 2008. It was my oldest one. And I donated it onto the wall. Yay. And you see, um, I'll post it back up on the Phoenix Normal, but if you look, it's like right in the back to the left. But yeah, Phoenix Normal has a presence at the Cannabis College. Free the weed on that. Any other questions? Go once, go twice. Did you see anybody tripping on like psychedelics like out in public? Yeah, one other issue. So I'm at a, I'm at a bar, that I basically bar hopped it all at night. Um, and I was at a bar and this one guy, this would never happen in the States. Never happen in the States. This one guy's walking down these stairs and the stairs are not regular stairs. They're like an inch and they're all crazy. It's all 1800s staircasing. It's horrible. <laughs> Definitely not for the handicap. You cannot get anywhere in Amsterdam if you're handicapped. Or inebriated. <laughs> Thank God we had a lot of weed. But there was this one guy, and I know he wasn't on weed. He would, had to been on something else. But it was just, it was a little bit sad, but a little bit funny at the same time. So the guy's walking down these stairs, and next thing you know, boom! I'm like, oh shit, this guy's dead. He just hit his head on the bar. I'm like, oh god, this guy's dead. I'm thinking, oh, ambulance, cops, something's coming, right? I'm just here drinking my drink. And no, the bartender comes up, oh, he's okay, he does this all the time. So they try to sit him back up on the bar stool. 
And what happens again? Boom! So for the fourth time,